Ms. Yeo Wan Ling. Sir, in my budget speech, I spoke about women in the workplace and how important it is that workplaces must offer women real, viable choices for their livelihoods, grant them protection in the making of these livelihood decisions, and to allow them to fulfil their potential, be it at home or in the workplace. As a nation, we must stop thinking of workplaces as a one-size-fits-all for all workers, with the new norm of flexible work arrangements and working from home, the notion of what is a workplace has been given a new breath of life. A workplace can be in the office from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., at home from 3 p.m. to 12 midnight. Indeed, a workplace can be anywhere and anytime so long as there's Wi-Fi and a virtual background. As such, these are exciting times for our women workers who are planning to return to work after a long hiatus because the typical nine to six office setting arrangement has never and could never work for them. At the labor movement, we ask that together with the government, we, number one, encourage our employers to open their minds to a new progressive workplace and work arrangements and indeed make these the norm and mainstay in the Singaporean workforce culture. Two, support companies through financial and advisory means the process of job redesign. And number three, advise our employers on the new HR best practices that support the outcomes of the job redesign and flexible work arrangement exercises. Areas that need to be looked into are work-life harmony arrangements, fair hiring practices, and performance evaluation criteria. Comparisons felt otherwise could be made between workers who work from home and workers who choose to work in the office. Could I have the Ministry update us on what their plans are for these three points? In my budget speech too, I spoke about how FDWs form a vital caregiving structure for working women and that FDW partners at home allows our working women a peace of mind in the workplace. Sir, it is with solemn gravity that I raise the plight of some FDWs in Singapore, and I'm sure we are not strangers to the case of the 24-year-old Pieng Nidong. Ms. Pieng, an FDW from Myanmar, was repeatedly abused to the point of death. To call this a cruelty would have been an understatement, and not to address this cruelty would be an injustice. Imagine sending your daughter, wife, sister away to a foreign land in hopes of a better life, only find out that she was treated this way. My heart broke. As a whole, it's important to be consistent in society. We cannot afford, on one hand, to celebrate the pivotal role FDWs play in the support ecosystem, and on the other hand, remain lax in protecting the, uh, the dignity and even lives of our FDWs. I would like to seek updates from the government on their plans to protect our FDWs and the, effort, and, and the efforts in community engagement to spread awareness on the roles of our FDWs in keeping our female work stro uh, workforce strong and resilient. 